can I ask the congregation please to stand as we uh, welcome the bride? Please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome to this uh, very special day for um, a couple of people here, <laughs> Sean and Amy. We uh, are really glad to be here with them to celebrate this day. You know, it was uh, the 16th of September 2005 when they first got together. So it's seven years today, actually. That's why they chose this day. Um, seven, I guess, being the perfect number for when you're going to get married as well. And we'll see what happens in the next sevens. Um, 
Uh, but we are really happy to be here with them to celebrate this day with them. Just a couple of small things from me. Um, for those of you who aren't uh, used to this building, uh, please notice where the fire exits are in case uh, of uh, emergency. And uh, in case you don't know or you haven't found them yet, the toilets are out to my left here and you'll see them uh, signposted out there. The, uh, the program will uh, run unannounced. You should have a program in front of you. So we will uh, just continue with the program as it is. Have a great afternoon. And uh, John and Amy, enjoy the day and try and remember as much as you can. John and Amy have chosen this text in Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17, for their day today. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, 
since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. afternoon um, both for those of you here in the congregation and I know because Uncle Phil has been on the live stream for the last two hours that there are a good number of people that are also joining us from Australia from Pakistan from Portugal from Scandinavia from America and we welcome you all as well uh, for this really joyful time it's, it's a really a family occasion we saw it last night in preparing for this service we see it now in that um, two pastors stand here, both of whom have children getting married today. So Pastor Obed and I are doing the vows together with Amy and with John. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the presence of this assembly to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted by God in the time of man's innocency, signifying to Christians the mystical union between Christ and his church, which holy estate Christ blessed and adorned by his presence and with the first miracle that he wrought in Cana of Galilee and is further commended to us by the apostle Paul as worthy of all honor and intended to promote a deeper union with our Lord himself. Therefore, not by any to be contemplated or entered into inadvisedly, lightly, or wantonly, but reverently, soberly, and in the fear of God, duly considering that matrimony was divinely ordained for mutual help and comfort that the one needs from the other, and should receive, both in prosperity and in adversity. Into this holy estate, these two persons here present come now to be solemnly and inseparably joined. Therefore, if any man can show just cause why they may not be lawfully joined together, let him now speak, or else hereever, forever hold his peace. I require and charge you both, as ye shall answer in the day of judgments, when the secrets of all hearts shall be disclosed, that if either of you know any cause or impediment why ye may not be lawfully joined together in matrimony, ye do now confess it. For be ye well assured that any who are coupled together otherwise than as God's word doth allow are not joined together by God, neither is their marriage lawful. John, if you can just repeat after me. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare that I know not. That I know not of any lawful impediment. Of any lawful impediment. Why I, John Zane Ainsworth. Why I, John Zane Ainsworth. May not be joined together in matrimony. May not be joined together in matrimony. To Amy Louise Hulbert. To Amy Louise Hulbert. That's your turn, Amy. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare. That I know not. That I know not. Of any lawful impediment. Of any lawful impediment. Why I, Amy Louise Hulbert. Why I, Amy Louise Hulbert. May not be joined together in matrimony. May not be joined together in matrimony. To John Zane Ainsworth. To John Zane Ainsworth. I'm going to ask you a question now, John. It's your choice what answer you give at the end of it. <laughs> Wilt thou have this woman to be thy wedded wife? to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor her, cherish her in sickness and in health and in forsaking all other, keep thee only unto her as long as ye both shall live? I will. Good answer.
Amy. Wilt thou have this man to be thy wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love, honor, and cherish him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto him as long as ye both shall live? I will. That was a very quick answer as well. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Who giveth this woman to be married to this man? Okay, if you take her right hand. Okay, and say after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, John Zane Ainsworth. To witness that I, John Zane Ainsworth. Do take thee, Amy Louise Holbert. Do take thee, Amy Louise Holbert. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better for worse. For better for worse. For richer for poorer. For richer for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish to love and to cherish till death do us part till death do us part according to God's holy ordinance in according to God's holy ordinance and thereto I plight thee my troth and thereto I plight thee my troth okay I call upon these persons here present I call upon these persons here present to witness that I Amy Louise Holbert to witness that I Amy Louise Holbert do take thee John Zane Ainsworth. Do take thee, John Zane Ainsworth. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better for worse. For better for worse. For richer for poorer. For richer for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance according to God's holy ordinance. And thereto I plight thee my troth. And thereto I plight thee my troth. What God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. For as much as John Zane Ainsworth and Amy Louise Hulberts have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and this company, and thereto have given their pledge their troth either to other, and have declared the same by the joining of hands, I pronounce that they be husband and wife together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God, the best maker of all marriages, combine your hearts in one, your realms in one. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you with a house full of sunshine, health, hearts full of cheer, love that grows deeper each day of the year. May your joys be as bright as the mornings, your years of happiness as numerous as like stars in the heavens, and your troubles uh, just shadows that fade in the sunlight of love. The Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace now 
and evermore. Amen. Wow. My first thoughts when I heard that Amy and John were getting married was, oh my goodness, my little sister's getting married. My second thought was, oh my goodness, I'm getting old. <laughs> but those thoughts were out the window when uh, they asked if I could preach 
Because then I thought, oh my goodness, <laughs> what am I going to say? So thank you, John and Amy, for placing me in this dilemma. <laughs> but I guess this uh, provides me with a great opportunity to share the wisdom from the lengthy two years that Jenna and I have been married <laughs> and to tell you all about the do's and the don'ts of marriage and, and how I have mastered how to be the world's greatest husband <laughs> and uh, Jenna has mastered how to be the world's greatest wife. Uh, however, if uh, people who have been married over 25 years are uh, still learning, then uh, I'm probably not yet qualified to teach. But one who is qualified to teach on the subject of relationships and how to make them work is God. So I'm very pleased with the scripture reading that you have chosen for this day. Colossians 3, 12 to 17, read so wonderfully by Daria there. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with the compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. In any, if any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in a perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through the Psalms hymns, songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Here in this letter to the Colossians, we have this perfect example of how to treat each other. <laughs> And these instructions are pretty much everything you need in a marriage if you want it to work. Both you and John, Amy and John, <laughs> are part of God's chosen people. God has chosen you and has called you holy and has called you dearly loved, which I think is just beautiful. In this text, God calls us to clothe ourselves in a particular way. Now, I know that the clothes Jesus sported back in his day were not exactly the clothes you see now on the shelves of either Topman or Burton's. But wherever you do shop, you know, those trends tend to come back in fashion, so uh, you never know. However, there's this timeless fashion that Jesus wore that seemed to attract both men and women to him in the thousands, and a fashion that has made people like Mother Teresa and Gandhi and many others famous throughout the world because they put on these same clothes. And here Paul lists these items, and uh, these items of clothing are compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Both of you in your love for God and your love for each other must recognize the need to dress like this, to dress like Jesus. But that's not all. You see, in Top Man or Top Shop, because that's where the ladies go, <laughs> they also have this shelf which has all these accessories on it, where you can get some extra bling to take you to the next level of fashion so that you're a cut above the rest. <coughs> See, back in Jesus' day, the Pharisees wore a similar fashion to what Jesus was wearing, but their clothing was a little bit more of a knockoff, almost the same, but 
missing something, looking similar but yet odd, like being a Nick instead of a Nike. Their problem was that they were wearing their clothes on the outside and not on the heart. They didn't have that accessory, that, that bling that Jesus had, which he called forgiveness. Some of Jesus' coolest stories involve this forgiveness. And it is important to his fashion. So if you can wear it, you'll go far in building a strong relationship and changing lives. As Paul writes in the scripture reading that you chose, if any of you has a grievance, forgive as the Lord forgave you. There's one more item that makes this whole outfit complete. One piece that, that holds it all together. A piece that, if left out, causes the rest not to really look right to not feel right, and so it must never be missed. It is the piece of clothing that surpasses all the other clothing, the piece that holds it all together, which helps it make sense. It's called love, and love binds it all together in a perfect way, in a perfect unity. Without love, what you both are doing here today in front of all these witnesses, would not make sense. The good news is that you both make perfect sense. And so because of your love for Christ and for each other, today you become bound together in a perfect unity. I love weddings. The joy, the celebration, the emotional high, the fact that if I get teary I won't be able to see um, it's just beautiful. And I know that Jesus loved weddings too. Which is why when we read the Bible, we read about him attending them and using them as illustrations to describe what he is like and what God is like. Jesus calls us his bride and he is our groom. That is why as Christians, Christ is so central to everything we are and everything we do. I love this because every time I go to a wedding, it's, it's a blessing because I get to see friends and family making a commitment to each other. But it's also a blessing because the wedding serves as a reminder, a symbol, if you like, to what my relationship with Jesus is like. And I hope this is the same for you. John and Amy. Now this is, uh, see if you recognize anything about Jesus in this. This is, this is what a Jewish wedding is like, the kind that Jesus attended. See, first of all, you have the betrothal. This was the, the binding. The young man prepares uh, a marriage contract or a covenant, if you like, which he presents to the intended bride and to her father. Included in this was the bride price. It was appropriate in that society to compensate the young woman's parents for the cost of raising her, as well as being an expression of the groom's love for the bride. And then there was also the acceptance. To see if this proposal was accepted, the young man would pour a cup of wine for his beloved, and wait to see if she drank it. The cup represented a blood covenant. If she drank the cup, she would have accepted this proposal, and they would be betrothed. The young man would then give gifts to his beloved, and then take his leave. The young woman would have to wait for him to return and be collected. When the young man left, he would go to prepare this wedding chamber. But before leaving, the young man would announce, I'm going to prepare a place for you. 
and I will return for you when it is ready. The usual practice was for the young man to return to his father's house and build a honeymoon room there. This was what symbolized in, the, in a canopy that, that's there in, in the Jewish weddings that we see today. He was not allowed to, to skimp on the work either. He had to get his father's approval before he could consider it ready for his bride. If asked the date of his wedding, he would have to reply, only my father knows. Meanwhile, the bride would be making herself ready so that she could be pure and beautiful for her bridegroom. During this time, she would wear a veil, and when she went out, it showed that she was spoken for, or that she had been bought at a price. When the wedding chamber was ready, the bridegroom would collect his bride, and he would do this at any time. So the bride would have to make special arrangements to be ready. It was the custom for the bride to keep a lamp, her veil, and other things beside her bed. Her bridesmaids were also waiting and would have to have oil ready in their lamps. When the bridegroom and his friends got close to the bride's house, they would have to give a shout and blow a trumpet to let her know to be ready. When the wedding party arrived at the father's house, the newlyweds went into the wedding chamber for a seven-day honeymoon. And the groom's be best man, best friend, stood outside the waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Proof of this was blood, but we won't go into any details. <laughs> but this showed the purity before the marriage. It showed a blood covenant, covenant sorry, a promise, a solemn binding. And after this, all the friends and family really started celebrating for seven days and the couple honeymooned. So Jesus came here to present us a marriage contract. We know that he gave his own blood as the bride price for all of those who would accept him. <coughs> After he rose again, Jesus spent 40 days with his new bride, us, talking about going to prepare a place. When Jesus was asked when this will take place, he said, only the Father knows. And like the bride getting ready for her wedding, so we must get ready for the time when Jesus comes to collect us. The promise that Jesus is preparing a place for us means that, that we must prepare ourselves to be ready to live with him, to be in harmony with him. And this brings us to the second half of the scripture that John and Amy have chosen. Verse 15 in Colossians 3, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Submit yourselves to the rule of peace, whether it be in marriage, or whether it be in family, or in life. Stop the bickering and ask the question, is this worth losing peace over? Verse 16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God. The word of Christ can refer to words about Christ or words spoken by Christ. Never stop learning about Christ. Never stop listening to Christ. The text says that this word is to dwell in us. This means that it should take up residence, be at home, be welcomed, be comfortable in your marriage and in your life. And allow his word to become your influence for good. In other words, 
live with the word every day. Notice there is this, this sharing that we do for one another as we speak the work of Christ in each other. We sing songs for the benefit of one another. Each of us has a well of wisdom and experience with Christ. Each of us has a bucket with which we can draw out water for each other to drink. Let Christ be the center of your marriage and in this unity, it will not only be a blessing for you, but it will also be a blessing for those that surround you. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, this is verse 17, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Everything should be done to bring credit to God's name. In the name of Jesus is a set of words that's often invoked to bring his power to bear on a situation. Today, in the name of Jesus, both of you have made a promise to God. And so as part of this promise, do everything to give honor to his name. Everything includes what we say, don't blame God. Be slow to speak. Don't use your tongue for venting anger, making empty pronouncements. Don't criticize each other or lie to cover up your faults. Don't speak evil of one another. Don't boast, complain, or swear. But rather, use your tongue to bless, improve, encourage, praise, and affirm each other and build each other up. So may God bless you as you step forward in life together and remember the, these important God-given relational gems so that even the toughest trial can be overcome and the greatest joy can be truly celebrated. May your married life be an abundance of joy to the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. Ainsworth. a tradition at this time, isn't there? Um, in the modern world, I'm expecting John to pull out his iPhone and send a tweet or a Facebook up <laughs> status update, but I think today we've agreed to do it the traditional way and seal this marriage with a kiss. waiting two hours and watching the online uh, webcast. Uh, 
Uh, I'm really happy you could do that because uh, you couldn't be here. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to say, yeah, good, <laughs> good, good. Thank you for watching. Um, I think everyone inside the church can hear me too. I uh, didn't realize that. Hello. Uh, and hello, everyone at home. Uh, we are now married. Uh, I'm just making this up. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, uh, both groups. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know what else to say, really. We're just uh, really happy that we're married now. And uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know what else I can add. Anyone, anyone have any ideas for me? I'm the happiest man alive. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, yes. And we'll see you out here. We'll give you lots of hugs. Come see us. <laughs>